In a fit of dementia, Cornelius casts a spell that set everything in the chamber on fire, including you. How's it going everyone? Welcome to Box 5 Gaming. I'm Wyatt Cole, and this is my first ever video game review. Imagine if Slay the Spire and the Darkest Dungeon got married, everything started to fall apart, so they had a baby to save their marriage. That baby would be called Across the Obelisk. This game takes place in an adventure that's full of story, interesting encounters, funny quips, and plenty of dying. What is a roguelite without plenty of dying? With just a three-member team, the developer DreamSype Games, who's based in Madrid, Spain, released Across the Obelisk on April 8th, 2021. As early as 2022, this game is still technically considered an early access, which probably will be for another one to three years, like most other indies on Steam. But let's be honest, a lot of AAA games do the same thing. As defined on Steam and the game's website, this is a co-op RPG deck-building roguelike game. My initial excitement after seeing this game was the fact that it is a co-op. I've always wanted to play co-op in a game like Slay the Spire and thought this would finally be my opportunity. Before starting your first run, there will be one of three game modes to choose from. Adventure Mode, Obelisk Challenge, and Weekly Challenge. Only Adventure Mode is initially available to you, with the others needing to be unlocked for making progress by playing the game. The game's story starts in the Kingdom of Ezenanthia. It's the King's Daughter's 16th birthday, and during her celebration, a huge explosion of bursts of energy occurred, causing the princess to mysteriously disappear. No one could find her, so the king issued a royal decree for all adventurers to go search for his missing daughter. The only lead these adventurers had was a rumor that an ancient obelisk that lay dormant for many centuries has finally awoken. There are many adventurers, or heroes as they're called in the game, to choose from. You'll start with one hero from each of the four classes, a healer, a rogue, mage, and a warrior. There's eight more heroes to unlock throughout your adventures, which total 12 different playable heroes as of this video. Each hero has their own unique abilities, and each class has their own sets of cards. During this game's brief tutorial, you'll only have two heroes to teach you how to play. The tutorial only covers very basic mechanics of the game, and I will say there's a bit of a learning curve. Personally, I enjoyed learning about this game by trial and fire, but I can see where others would want a more in-depth explanation. Although, if you're familiar with other games in this genre, you'll probably pick it up pretty quickly. Once you get to the tutorial, two more heroes will join up with you and you'll end up in your first town. Towns are hubs that are found at the beginning of each new map. Here you can add, remove, or upgrade cards to your deck and add equipment or pets in town's armory. Towns are upgradable and those upgrades greatly affect how you start out your adventures. Looking at the maps, you'll see several directions to choose from. Picking a certain route provides different stories, opportunities to unlock new characters, cards, and items, and some routes have unique monsters you wouldn't encounter on any other route. All roads eventually end with the final boss for that map. The roads are much like the yellow brick road from Wizard of Oz. It can be fun, confusing, dangerous, and in the end, you'll wake up glad it's all over. There for a minute, she was going to leave us. Oh, but I did leave you, Uncle Henry. That's just the trouble. And I tried to get back for days and days. Now let's talk about fighting. The enemies you'll be encountering are all considered monsters, and no matter how friendly they may look, they will murder you. The main objective of a fight is to get the monster's health down to zero. Each hero starts out with a starting deck of 15 cards. Heroes can't have less than 15 cards, but there's plenty of opportunity to add more either in towns or finishing counters. Playing a card uses energy, although there are cards that have zero energy consumption. Energy is provided at the beginning of turns and the amount provided depends on your heroes and their abilities. There are cards with effects that increase the amount of energy provided per turn. The timing of turns is determined by speed. Certain heroes and monsters have more speed than others, which helps determine who goes first or last. And of course, there are cards to buff or debuff speed. There are two types of movements during a battle, turns and rounds. Turns are over after each individual hero and monster finishes with their cards they want to play or they run out of energy. And rounds are over after all heroes and monsters have finished their turns. It's important to pay attention when a turn around are over because certain card effects correspond with the turn around. For example, there's two types of cards that help prevent damage called block and shield. Block is applied immediately and goes away at the end of the round, but shield isn't applied until the beginning of the next round. I will say, it took me a little bit to figure out strategies for this type of damage prevention. To attack a monster, select the card desired. You'll notice in the middle of the card, there will be an indication of what and who that card applies to. For example, this card will only attack the front monster, but this card will attack the back monster. At first, I thought this type of gameplay took too much time, but eventually grew to really enjoy the type of strategies this fighting style brought about. If you right-click a hero or monster, you can select their character sheet. 
As you can see, there's a lot of different types of statuses, effects, and buffs. At first, this will feel overwhelming, but as the game progresses, you will become more familiar and notice there's a ton of replay value provided because all these different statuses allow you to come up with many different strategies and preferred gameplay styles. As I mentioned earlier, selecting certain routes in maps will make you encounter different types of enemies that you wouldn't encounter anywhere else on the map. For example, if you want to choose a route where you know there's monsters that might be more susceptible to taking damage by fire effects, you might want to select Cornelius at the beginning of the run. Cornelius is the hero shown burn everything from the beginning of the clip. There's two features you'll come across often that I'd like to mention. During certain event counters, you'll see event rolls on dialogue choices. These rolls use the energy of your hero's cards to determine if you pass or fail. For example, you'll pass a roll if the randomly drawn hero cards has a cumulative energy amount below 5. A pass can give you a unique item, cards, or currency. A fell would generally give you a negative card that'll automatically play when drawn during fighting encounters. The other feature I want to mention is Corruption. Corruption is only occasionally available for certain fighting encounters. Adding the optional Corruption to your fight will up the difficulty and add buffs to monsters and debuffs to the heroes. The rewards for winning a corrupted fight can be worth it, but I found about 40% of the time the rewards weren't worth the potentially run-ending encounter. After your first death and starting your next run, you'll find yourself in the team selection screen. In true roguelike fashion, here you can upgrade your heroes via perks. At first, I found the perks seemingly not too helpful, but after unlocking the third tier, I started to see the real impact they had during gameplay. Also in this section, you can set your hero's positioning, view different stats and abilities of each hero, and check out their starting cards. After your first few deaths, you'll start to get a good understanding of the mechanics of the gameplay. The game does a decent job at creating curiosity and challenges that make you want to go for another run. Obviously, I didn't review everything this game has to offer, but I personally enjoyed all the surprises and awe moments. Unfortunately, none of my friends wanted to buy across the albums can play with me, so I had to figure out other means to check out the multiplayer features. After a quick Google search, I found the game's official Discord server. I made a post in their looking for a group channel and found three awesome people to do a run with. I will say multiplayer mode makes the game worth it. The game does a good job with coordination among your group and being able to focus on one deck at a time is pretty nice. The multiplayer session that I played took a decent amount of time, but I had a great experience the entire run. I've linked their discord in the description below. I recommend joining to check out updates about the game, some concept art, and to find a group to play with. I really enjoyed all the layers of this game. The features and quirks kept providing me with more intrigue and new things to explore. There's tons of replay value and being able to play with your buddies in an adventure like this is always a plus. A couple things I would like to note that I found a bit tedious, managing four decks at one time and the beginning game prep. Both these things can take up a good bit of time and if you're like me, someone who wants to jump right into a run sometimes, it can get disencouraging. Maybe playing in multiplayer mode can alleviate some of this pressure and the game does try to help by allowing you to save deck combinations and towns. I would definitely recommend Across the Obelisk to anyone who is a fan of games in this genre. Although there's a lot to learn if you're just starting out with roguelike deck building, I'm sure if you're really interested in buying this game, you can watch some guides online and you'll be just fine. For my first ever official video game review scoring, I'll give Across the Obelisk a 3.5 out of 5. There's replayability and engaging combat, but eventually you will really start to feel the grind and the micromanagement can be a bit tedious. That wraps up this review. Like I said in the beginning, this is my first ever video game review. It would mean the world to me if you all could leave a comment below letting me know if you found this video helpful, if you think I should never make another YouTube video again, or just tell me about your day. It's up to you. Thanks again for watching and have a terrific day.